have rehearsed, you know. Mm -hmm. That would have been the easy way. Elvis said, thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> anyway, um, well, welcome to the Thompson Tower Show. Excuse me, you're uh, I'm, uh, uh, yeah, welcome to the Thompson Tower Show. I'm Tom. They call me Guitar Tom because I'm often seen with the guitar. They call me on the phone. They say, hey, man, what's your show about anyway? I say, yeah, it's about an hour. About an hour, it's about guitar players, guitar playing, all things guitaristic. So, sorry, I'm just trying to figure things out. So, normally, this is the time I say, well, if you, you know, Call me on the phone, ask me a question about the care and feeding of your guitar or whatever. But since we're now doing a live show from Uptown Bill's Coffee House, as we do every month, so if you're out there somewhere near downtown Iowa City, you can come on down to Uptown Bill's Coffee House and uh, watch all the magic being made. So anyway, uh, this is our Halloween show. I don't know if you can tell by the way I'm dressed, but this is a costume. <laughs> and uh, I've had these experiences. You know, I play guitar. I play guitar in California, New York, and other places, and they. You hear them from Iowa, and they start laughing and stuff. And just to them, they figure, well, you have chickens in the front yard, and they could keep the hogs out back. You see? So I decided I'd go native. And uh, <laughs> I have a hat that's goofier than this one, but Laura wouldn't let me wear it. So, oh. uh, but anyway, this is our Halloween show, anyway. So, uh, we'll try to have some spooky stuff. But oh, uh, if you are up there and want to come in, uh, sorry. <laughs> There's a mandolin player over there. I, I can hardly wait. Um, <laughs> um, anyway, uh, <laughs> but if you want to come on down, there'll be free candy and uh, music and fun for everybody. So.
unusual uh, Telecaster. So, uh, Bob, you're doing the camera, but at the same time, you're. Uh... I'll come on. Okay. Uh, what happened to all our cameramen? He's going to pan to the podium, and uh... <laughs> we've got a guy who's in the show, and he's a. Uh... The other guy's going to go. Uh... There. To the podium. Oh, I'm just going to slip in here. Yeah, yeah. You sounded a little like uh, Tuck, Tuck and Patty. I, like Tuck Andrews, uh, I've been thinking about Tuck lately. Yeah. I don't know. I've got nice this. guy, very nice guy. Yeah. Tuck and Patty um, began their career in Palo Alto, mm -hmm. California. When I, I was living there at the time, I was a mm. newspaper reporter. Mm -hmm. And uh, they used to play outside a little theater called the Varsity Theater, which had an outdoor patio. And they would, you could have dinner outside and they would play. Oh. They fell in love and got married. Yeah, I right there in front of the theater. In front of the theater, right, right in front of the theater. Right in front of the theater. Oh, I didn't know yeah. that. I, I took a, a, some some uh, clinics from Tuck Andrews uh, a long time oh, ago. Oh, oh, uh, yeah, guitar playing stuff, finger picking. Wow, wow. Yeah, he uh, he helped crook me. So. <laughs> well, uh, I just actually I just came up to slip in a little Halloween joke. Okay, while sure. Your uh, the next guest is coming. Uh, -huh. uh What do you get when you cross a Bambi and a ghost? I don't know what. Bamboo. Oh boy. Oh. Uh, oh boy. Like, hey, that's a good reaction. Everyone, oh. Yeah. He didn't want him to laugh. It's, <laughs> he wanted him to groan. Oh, okay. uh, Bob. Yes. You have something for us here. Right? Yes. Thursday is All Souls Day, All Saints Day, mm -hmm. Day of the Dead. Mm -hmm. So naturally, I brought in a poem by Robert Service that's set at Christmas time. Okay, sure. Yeah. <laughs> of course. Perfect sense. It's the cremation of Sam McGee. <laughs> Even better. <laughs> there are strange things done in the midnight sun by the men who moil for gold. The Arctic trails have their secret tales that would make your blood run cold. The northern lights have seen queer sights, but the queerest they ever did see was the night on the marge of Lake Tilbarge that I cremated Sam McGee. Now Sam McGee was from Tennessee where the cotton blooms and blows. Why he left his home in the south to roam that round the pole God only knows. He was always cold, but the land of gold seemed to hold him like a spell, though he'd often say in his homely way he'd sooner live in hell. On Christmas Day, we were mushing our way over the Dawson Trail. Top of your cold through the carcass fold, it stabbed like a driven nail. If our eyes we'd close, the lashes froze till sometimes we couldn't see. It wasn't much fun, but the only one to whimper was Sam McGee. On that very night, as we lay packed tight in our robes beneath the snow, the dogs were fed and the stars overhead were dancing heel and toe. He turned to me and cap says he, I'll cash in this trip, I guess. And if I'm due, I ask of you, you won't refuse my last request. Well, he seemed so low that I couldn't say no, and he says with a sort of moan, it's the cursed cold and it's got right hold till I'm chilled clean through the bone. Yet taint being dead, it's my awful dread. It's the icy grave that pains, so I want you to swear that foul or fair, you'll cremate my last remains. Well, pal's last need is a thing to heed, so I swore I would not fail. And we started on the streak of dawn, but God, he looked ghastly pale. He crouched on the sleigh and he raved all day of his home in Tennessee. And before nightfall, a corpse was all that was left of Sam McGee. There wasn't a breath in that land of death, and I hurried, horror-driven, with a corpse half hid that I couldn't get rid could because of a promise given. It was lashed to the sleigh, and it seemed to say, you may tax your brawn and brains, but you promise true, and it's up to you to cremate my last remains. Now, a promise made is a debt unpaid, and the trail has its own stern code. In the days to come, though my lips were dumb and my heart how I cursed that load, in the long, long night by the lone firelight, while the huskies round in a ring, howled out their woes to the homeless snows. Oh God, how I loathe that thing. And every day that quiet clay seemed to heavy and heavier grow. So on I went, the dogs were spent, the grove was getting low. The trail was bad and I felt half mad, but I swore I wouldn't give in. And I'd often sing to the hateful thing and it harkened with a grin. So I came to the marge of Lake LaBarge, and there a derelict lay. It was jammed in the ice, and I saw in a trice it was called the Alice May. And I looked at it, and I thought a bit, and I looked at my frozen chum, and here, I said with a sudden cry, is my crematorium. Some planks I tore from the cabin floor, and I lit the boiler fire. Some coal I found that was lying around, and I heaped the fuel higher. The flames just soared, and the furnace roared, and a blaze you seldom see. 
and I burrowed a hole in the glowing coal and I stuffed in Sam McGee. <laughs> then I made a hike, for I didn't like to hear him sizzle so, and the heavens scowled and the huskies howled and the wind began to blow. It was icy cold, the hot sweat rolled down my cheeks and I didn't know why, and the greasy smoke in, the inky in an inky cloak went streaking down the sky. I do not know how long in the snow I wrestled with grisly fear, but the stars came out and they danced about ere I ventured near. I was sick with dread, but I bravely said, I'll just take a peek inside. I guess he's cooked and it's time I looked, and then the door I opened wide. Well, there sat Sam, looking cool and calm, in the heart of the furnace roar, and he wore a smile. You can see him while he said, please close the door. <laughs> it's fine in here, and I greatly fear you'll let in the cold and storm. Since I left Plumtree in Tennessee, I've never been so warm. <laughs> There are strange things done in the midnight sun, and the men who moil for gold. The Arctic trails have their secret tales that would make your blood run cold. The northern lights have seen queer sights, but the queerest they ever did see was the night on the marge of Lake Wabarge when they cremated Sam McGee. We should uh, have to plug into something. We could, uh, we could borrow a uh, we we'll plug you into the amp there. We could borrow Tim's, or else you could just by playing that mic if you want. I don't know. Play into the mic. Then you can sing into that one. Oh boy. And then you have like you know. Okay. So you're on your own in this one. Yeah. Uh, well, let's see. Ooh. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Say something. Hello. That sound pretty good. Does that sound pretty good? Yeah. All right. All right, so you're going to do your... This is the first time you ever did it all by yourself on this show, isn't it? First time. Just me. Yeah, I'm going to turn my volume knob down. Too. So I won't get involved. Okay. I kind of have you as my backup, though. Oh. You got my back. Yeah. I'll probably be straight off in the space. Good. 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 All right. something okay. in the second half of the show. Okay. But right. um, this is a Halloween theme today, yeah. and um, I'm kind of fun impaired, but I do like <laughs> bones. Yeah, so yeah. So I brought some to talk about. Okay, I keep my bones on the inside. Oh, no. Yeah. That's, this is all. So I have this skull here I'd like to talk about. Yeah. Um, first of all, it's not real bone. This is a resin cast. Oh, okay. So. 
So all of you, I know it's dinner time. <laughs> don't, no, don't lose your appetite. But I've always been fascinated by bones, and I've sort of finally figured out why that is and why it ties into some of the other things that fascinate me in life, you know, that I pursue for hobbies like code breaking and submarines and things like that. And that is that bones have hidden stories, and they will tell the stories to people who know how to listen. And this one, this is, as I say, this is a reproduction of a, of a bone that's in a museum, and it just is full of cool stories. They're not really Halloween, -y, but it's a skull that's Halloween. So what can the skull tell us? Um, well, something that any skull can tell us is that this was the skull of a woman. And uh, everybody who's listening, reach over to the nearest person of the opposite sex and you will see for yourself how your bones are different. Males have a, a ridge above their brow and females have a nice smooth brow and males have a kind of a knob right in the middle of the back of the head, right above the neck, there's this big lump back there, and females have a nice smooth back of the head. I, think so. I was just thinking that Neanderthals have a, have a ridge right there, and dogs have a bump right there, so does that mean that men are more like Neanderthal dogs? Or? Well, now I have an interesting theory about that. Um, there's a hypothesis for yes, it. Yes, you know, why are generally uh, male human skulls more robust than female human skulls. And my theory about that is that we are evolved to, that males are better adapted to receive heavy blows to the face <laughs> and survive. And From the females, perhaps. Well, <laughs> but, but females don't, don't, you know, aren't subject historically, but I mean, you know, for the last million years or so, to interpersonal violence as much as males are. So females are more delicately built in the skulls. Anyway, but then there's a few other interesting things about this. You can tell by the teeth that uh, this woman was mature, because the, the third molars erupt when we're about 16, 17, 18 years old, and she's got fully erupted third molars. The teeth are also really worn down. I should point out that this skull comes from Bolivia, hmm. and it's about 1,200 years old. <clears throat> so it's prehistoric uh, South American. And the teeth are all worn down, and uh, that's from her diet. She probably ate a lot of ground of stone of, of grain that was ground by rubbing stones together, and a lot of stone grit in her diet. And you can see that the teeth that erupted earlier are more worn than the ones that erupted later. So as I say, that like the, the third molars come in when you're 17 years old, they're not nearly so worn. So I put her in her 30s, maybe. Hard to say. But the really cool things is you see that her forehead is really sloping back. And that was because when she was a child, her parents, for some cultural reason, maybe just for beauty or maybe for some spiritual purpose or something like that, bound her forehead with a board really tightly. And as, as this baby grew up with a board tied to her forehead, her the bones in the front of her head grew in this distinctive pattern. And then the perhaps most striking thing about it is there's this big ugly hole in the top of her skull. And how did that get there? Well, we know how that got there. It was a surgical procedure that you often see in prehistoric cultures, and even sometimes today, uh, called trepanation, where perhaps uh, she had epilepsy, perhaps she had migraines, perhaps she had some sort of mental illness, and her people understood that it had something to do with what's going on in her head, and it was probably something like an evil spirit, and so maybe if we make a hole in it, we can get let the spirit out and she'll be well. And so this hole was cut in the top of her head by scraping the bone. I'm sorry, it is dinner time, but it's still pretty cool. And what we can tell by looking at the nature of the injury is, you know, this may amaze you, but she survived. She lived for a good long time afterwards because most of the injury is healed. So that's just an example of how bones tell stories. And every single one of them does. Anytime you're in the woods and you find a little animal bone or something like that, or a, um, 
wherever you encounter bones in your life, even the bones in your own body tell the story of your of your life. So that's interesting. I think maybe the uh, uh, she probably went crazy with a headache that she got from having that uh, board board stuck in her head. Yes, well, <laughs> that could be. Anyway, I'll just. For yeah. for a while. When you say the bones can tell you something, the skull can tell you something, I thought you were going to put it up to your ear and go, hi there. <laughs> no, 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 no. no. So I would see, say. yes. But uh, that, that would work. <laughs> that would be good. If yeah. you had evil spirits in your head. Yeah. <laughs> okay, there you go, team. Uh, very good, very that's good. Your, that's your forensic anthropologist. Okay, well, thank, thank you so much. Thank you, brother. A skull? You have a skull, that's great. And, uh, it's, a, it's a nice skull, too. It's not a, uh, like a... So as we get our next man, I just want to tell you something about my my, uh, my outfit. This is actually a costume that I'm wearing here. Uh, it's not uh, that far from reality, and uh, this is my version oh, come on, sit down, of a clown. But I just want to tell you that, that, that a long time ago, I, uh, my buddy Raimundo Rosales and I, who was a guy from Mexico, we used to be Raimundo y Tomas, and I was an honorary Mexican. Uh, we you know we did a, a, an act where we did a, you know boleros and norteñas and stuff like that, Mexican music, and I played guitar with him. But anyway, we were doing a video where I went out in the woods and uh, up in cornfield actually and shot a, a derelict lit guitar with a pheasant gun, you know, <laughs> shotgun, boom, you know, because it was a part of a sketch about how the, some guitars you just can't get them to be in tune. What do you do? And you know, that was the punchline. So it was like, so we were shooting this thing, and and I say I was I had a, a, a slightly more obnoxious uh, shirt than the one I'm wearing, and the hat was worse, but but Laura wouldn't let me wear that one to the show tonight. So, uh, but basically it was this sort of like, so uh, anyway for a previous video where I backed over a, a guitar with a van and crushed it. Uh, I took the, uh, part of the thing was taken to West Music Company um, for repairs. And it was just in, you know, pieces in a, in a shopping bag and it's all flat and, and things are falling off. And the guys just laughed and laughed and laughed at me when I walked in dressed like this. But anyway, on the way back from the cornfield shooting the guitar with was Raimundo, he just went along for the ride um, and actually to hold the camera, I guess. But he, uh, we went to Hills Tap in Hills, Iowa. And I walked in Hill's Tap dressed like this, basically, or just a little bit more hickish with a Mexican guy, and nobody batted an eye. Because right? you know, <laughs> I looked, you know, at West Music in Coralville, they all thought it was funny, but in Hill, it's just, just like that. <laughs> hey, schifoso. Hey, what's the matter, you? Porco miseria. <laughs> anyway, sorry, we're, uh, what we're going to do, we're telling Man Lynn, so here's uh, a. <laughs> It suits you. You should grow one like that. I think. Uh, I think you ought to wax it up there like this, though. Get it like a, get the Salvador Dali look. I think would be so. Anyway. So, uh, could you just play some notes? We're, we're having intonation problems. Just uh, play a G. I don't know, man. I I uh, hang on. I. Uh, Did you go flat? Oh, oh man. Can I, can uh, uh, somebody, uh, uh, can somebody come over here tell some jokes? Fast? Uh, I, I, need, I, need, I just need to borrow it. It's, it's, it's going out of tune, so let me, let, can I fight with it for a second? Uh, okay, uh, I, need, I need some, uh, okay, hang, just hang on a second. Just, I need some jokes real quick, because I, I got a, a few more uh, Halloween things. Yeah, 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 please. Let's see. Um, what do you get when you cross a vampire and a snowman? Don't know. I have to address these to you because he's busy. Uh, frostbite. Oh. Whoa. Oh. Did you hear about these two leaves on a tree? Uh, one of them looks at the other and says, I'm falling for you. Oh. 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 Uh, why, why didn't the skeleton cross the road? Didn't have the guts. Oh, yeah. oh, that's a bad. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Uh, oh, yeah. Hey, here's one. This is from a, a group we wished we'd gotten to come visit us here at Uptown Bills. Ash Ryder in uh, Berkeley almost got her, but then she got a bigger, a bigger city and a bigger gig. Um, Thinks two muffins are in the oven. One muffin says to the other, "You know, it's getting kind of hot in here." The second muffin says. Whoa, a talking muffin! <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, there you go. I think right, we're ready? okay. Right, okay. Those were scary. So, I think we've been a little flat on us. Let's see what happens. So, play, play, play a G again, will you? Just, just play me a G. Oh, man! Uh, 
big as a guitar? No, but it's faster to the guitar. It's the, faster to the guitar to you. Yeah. All right, here. Uh, do me a favor. Just chop that thing on. And uh, if you play a G chord or something, see if it's... I, uh, I had a roommate, or a guy I lived in a hotel with was from Italy, he taught me how to swear. And I, I was in an Italian restaurant in Washington, Iowa, which they pronounce Washington. And the cook, the chef, is from Italy. And I, I went through all my swearing, and he and his wife, who had lived in Italy for many years, although she was from Washington, uh, they turned around and looked at me because actually, apparently, my pronunciation is perfect. When I swear, it's not, I can hardly speak anything. I can, I can hardly put a sentence together in Italian, but I swear really well. So. <laughs> Hey, skip also. <laughs> anyway, um, and my hand comes up like this. <laughs> what do you call an Italian with a broken arm? Speech impediment. Oh, oh no. Oh, okay. oh. oh. That's a terrible. 
<laughs> See, that's skiff also. Skiff also. Oh, come on. Sicilian, Elvis Presley. <laughs> I think I like it better this way. She's <laughs> actually written by Edward de Capua. Yes, Eduardo.
Perfect. Pouring olive oil on it, and I say that's. Uh... <laughs> Grazie. Molto bene. Grazie. Molto bene. Molto, molto bene. Uh -oh. oh, wow. You know, at this point in the show, a lot of people who are watching are uh, going to the fridge to see if there's some little snack in there. Yeah. But you can't really do that since you are the host of the show. Yeah, I can't leave. Perhaps you've forgotten. Yeah. So uh, we, we're bringing the treat to you. Uh, uh, Uptown Bills is known for uh, its sodas like uh, bacon and sweet corn and uh, pumpkin pie. But tonight we have one, a seasonal favorite called Dracula's Blood. Oh, boy. <laughs> Here it is. It's from Cooper's Cave in uh, Glen, and Glen Falls, New York. Ah. <laughs> so we have this just for you. Thank you. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> That's great. That's a, and, uh, here's looking at you, Bill. Uh, <laughs> smells more like strawberries. <laughs> I'm relieved. It's, it's the uh, secret ingredient in strawberries. Yeah. Say, Craig, since um, I'm just here drinking on the job, maybe you'd like to uh, sure. <clears throat> share with us here. Sure. So I was asked to write a Halloween related essay. Sorry, I'm trying to get this. Um, and so here's what I came up with. Uh, Tomorrow is Halloween, a time when stories of ghosts, poltergeists, and apparitions abound. For those who don't believe these mythical creatures are real, it's fun to pretend they are. It's great to be scared when you know it's not real. Mythical beings and phenomena are created to explain the unexplained, to give reason to the bizarre, and to feed our imagination. So when a light bulb or machine suddenly stops working, we can attribute this disruption to an invisible cause. Personally, I don't believe any of these Halloween phenomena, ghosts, poltergeists, ghouls, vampires, wolfmen, etc. are true. At the same time, humans don't know everything, and what is thought to be true is constantly evolving and changing. I believe the popularity of zombies says we don't want to believe that death is final. There is hope after the end of life. We may be reanimated to walk slowly through a shopping mall once again, stopping at the food court, except this time looking for brains instead of burgers. While I'm personally a non-believer in many ghost stories, some people claim to have encountered a ghost, or at least a ghostly presence. Since these ghost stories can't be proven, people are left to make their own decision, whether to believe or not. Our culture is both fascinated and repelled by the idea of the devil, witches, and the dark arts. The Salem witch trials and other misguided persecutions were born from ignorance. But some things are still being demonized out of lack of understanding and misguided beliefs. What about when people try to scare us? I mean, really scare us. The near collision of Halloween and Election Day presents two scenarios for being scared and exploiting fear. In both instances, we are told certain scary things are real, but we're left to decide. There have been many political bogeymen through the years. Communism, socialism, Japanese, Germans. Any scapegoat would do if it fed people's fears and had them act the way the fear mongers wanted. Sometimes our collective imagination is so forced fed by popular culture that some have difficulty distinguishing fantasy and reality. Out of the many presidential poll questions asked recently, one asked which candidate would be better suited to repel an alien invasion. <laughs> Is this an issue? It may speak to one's perceived leadership qualities, but can't be a serious issue on its own. Those trying to instill fear often play fast and loose with the truth. They may state facts, but these truths may be incomplete or out of context. It's like the Halloween party game where spaghetti and grapes are concealed in a box or passed around in the dark. A frightening story is told along with these props, and listeners are told that the items are a witch's eyes and hair, or hair and eyeballs. Next time you hear a frightening or shocking fact, try to open the box or turn on a light and examine carefully before jumping to a conclusion. Mm -hmm. Very good. Oh, very good. Uh, oh, yeah. Let's play some, uh... 
Ed won't be an Italian, but uh, he will play the mandolin. Oh yeah, I want to pass around the candy. Uh, uh, pass it around. Uh, I brought, brought candy. Uh, Russell Stover is actually a lot sweet, but uh, if you like coconut, uh, good luck. <laughs> Would you uh, give me an A that you would like? Are you going to? So, um, yeah, I guess you won't need that mic unless you want it. No, I don't need it. Find it somewhere else. All uh, right. So, uh... <coughs>
Yeah. We're running out of time already, so. Yeah. Um, it's ukulele time. Uh, sorry, I. Uh, that's very good. We'll do another one sometime soon. Okay. Okay, that was fun. That was fun. I like that. We got to. Uh, uh, so I got to do. Uh, yeah, it's just like a. Well, let me show get a. You don't think you're gonna be able to fill up an hour? And now we got like ten minutes left. It's like a maze. Oh yeah. So. Uh, Everybody get a microphone and uh, have a seat and uh... <laughs> Well, uh, we we're talking about how men have a bump in the back of their head like a dog, so uh... <laughs> Here we have a uh, map here ow, ow. Uh, <laughs> That's pretty good, I like that uh, Anyway, are we, uh, are we all at least close enough in tune? Everybody play an E minor chord, will you? So I gotta sing this song here. I, I didn't know the chords on. You may look at her. She's got the chords. I, yeah. I, I just have big because I was. Uh, never mind. So we're gonna do a. Uh...
We'll do that. Uh, you're going to get a voice mic because uh, we're going to sing. I'm going to sing even more. <laughs> I'm going to sing more. There's your Halloween scare for you. <laughs> but Donna's, Donna's going to sing with me. I'll make it better. So. Thank you. Pete knows about microphones. That's good. He's seen them before. Thank you. All right. Are we doing, are we doing the Adams Family? I'm sorry. Oh. Are we doing, are we, let's do the, uh, do you want to do Feeling yeah. Groovy? We're almost out of time, right? Well, oh, let's is that do three minutes? Feeling Groovy. Oh, man. Groovy. Four minutes? Okay. Let's do Feeling Groovy. I want to do the, uh, oh, boy. Three minutes. Oh. Want to do a feeling groovy? Sure. For werewolves of Iowa, I don't know. Credits are rolling. Credits are rolling? Uh -oh. Well, I'm sorry, everybody. I, I, we have more stuff, but maybe we'll do it next year. That's it for the show. Yeah.